Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian and today I am going to be talking about shadowing. What it is, what it's good for, what it's not good for and how to do it correctly. As a teacher, I am interested in any and all techniques and methods that are going to be beneficial for the student. And recently I've noticed a resurgence in the shadowing technique, also called the imitation technique. Basically, you wear earphones and you listen to a native speaker speaking and you try to repeat exactly what they are saying at the same time as they are saying it. And supposedly this technique helps to improve your accent and pronunciation and rhythm, among other things. Now, although this technique has been around for a very long time, the person responsible for making it popular with people as a technique for learning a foreign language is this man, Professor Alexander Arguedges, who is quite a well-known American linguist and polyglot. Now, on his website, he suggests that when you're shadowing, there are three important considerations to remember. One is to walk outdoors as swiftly as possible. The second one is to maintain a perfectly upright posture. And the third one is to articulate thoroughly in a loud, clear voice. Here is a short video of Professor Arguedges demonstrating his technique in Mandarin Chinese. Now, supposedly this technique works by developing your motor memory. But I have five serious doubts about the technique. The first one is this. Now, I hate to repeat myself, but I'm going to repeat myself again. You are never going to lose your accent. So don't waste your time trying. And this is not just my personal opinion. This is scientific fact. The second thing is this. There is actually no evidence that shadowing can help you to improve your pronunciation or accent or intonation or anything. I spent quite a long time searching online for any type of reputable scientific papers and the only one that I could find was this, published by the University of Berkeley. And according to them, the effects of shadowing are inconclusive. The third thing is this, shadowing is actually really difficult, not just mentally, but also physically and technologically. On the surface, shadowing appears like a really simple technique. All you need is some audio and some headphones. But no, at the beginning, when you first start shadowing, you need to find a speaker that you understand who also produces transcripts of everything they say. Very, very accurate transcripts. And that obviously severely limits the amount of material that you can use. And then, once you've actually finished shadowing, if you've recorded yourself, which you need to find a way to also record yourself, then you need to somehow listen to yourself speaking at the same time as the original native speaker is speaking and then decide if they sound the same while you're reading the transcript and... The fourth thing is this, no feedback. Now, when you do shadowing, you're walking around and repeating this audio, but how do you know if you're pronouncing it correctly? Foreign learners are notoriously bad at detecting their own pronunciation mistakes. That's why they make the pronunciation mistakes in the first place. 
When you're shadowing, normally you are not recording what you're saying. And all of your mental processing power is just focused on repeating what they say and not on what's coming out of your mouth. You do not have any feedback, not from a recording or a teacher or your fellow students. So how are you supposed to know if you're pronouncing it really well or really badly? The final thing is this. How do you choose a native speaker as your model? And this for me, I think, is the biggest problem about shadowing, which is it's all about imitation. Now, every time you open your mouth, within milliseconds, you give information about yourself, where you're from, how old you are, your socioeconomic status, your social status, how much education you have, who you hang out with. All of that information is contained in your accent. So when you go out and you choose a native speaker to imitate, you are taking all of this artificial stuff that doesn't belong to you and you're copying it. Now, I don't believe in that at all. I think that native speakers are not people that we should be trying to imitate. As a foreign learner or as a learner of English as a second language, you should always try to be you just speaking in English. Now, before I move on to the next part of this video, I just want to be clear. I'm not saying that shadowing doesn't work. I'm just saying that there's no evidence that it does. And there are lots of other ways to practice your pronunciation and accent that are proven to be effective that I think you should use instead. But if you are going to shadow, what's the correct way to do it? And who should do it? Well, there are a group of people for whom shadowing not only is a good idea, but an absolutely essential part of their job. And that is simultaneous interpreters. Simultaneous interpreters are those amazing, talented and hardworking people who sit in those little booths at the United Nations and they listen to people speaking in a foreign language and they translate that simultaneously to a room full of people. It's a very stressful and very important job. And when those people are training to be interpreters, the first thing they do, the way they start, is by doing shadowing. Now, what we need is a guide to shadowing written by a simultaneous interpreter, someone who really knows about this stuff. Ah, and here it is. <laughs> <laughs> this was written by Chris Guichaud de Fortis, who is a senior interpreter at NATO. He wrote this paper called Shadowing. What, how, when, and why. And in this paper, he suggests four ways that you can use shadowing correctly. Now, I want to just say that shadowing is extremely difficult. And these advanced shadowing techniques that he talks about in this paper are even more difficult. So for this example, I have asked the wonderful, talented native speaker James to come here and do and practice some of these shadowing techniques with me. This is James. Hi, James. Hi. Um, where are you from? England. <laughs> what, what's going to happen in the World Cup this year? It's coming home, boys. It's coming home. We're going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> James is very excited about the World Cup. Um, so you're a, a native speaker of yes. English? Okay. Yes. Well, James has no idea what we're going to do today. Um, James, today we're going to do something called shadowing. Okay. Right? Now, what this is for, it's for people to improve their, their pronunciation and their accent. Um, and normally it's for people with only an intermediate level of English, yeah. right? Yeah. So for you, because you're a native speaker, it should be really easy. Should be. Should be easy, because this is the technique, right? Um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you some audio. Okay, this is audio from the Aussie English podcast. 
Okay, and it's a guy called Pete. If you don't listen to the Aussie English podcast, you should because it's 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 an incredible podcast. Okay, so um, what you're going to do is is listen to 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 Pete talking, and and as he's talking, I want you to try to repeat at the same time everything he's saying. Right, okay. 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 That's all you have to do. So you can close your eyes if you want. Um, just listen. Just try to repeat. And if if you get lost, just don't panic, just stop and try and... Yeah. Okay? Okay. Alright guys, back again, back again, and I decided to go for Speak. a walk today. <laughs> so, I've just come down out of the uh, <laughs> suburb that I'm living in here. And there is a nice okay, park. Wait, we... Oh, okay. that is so difficult. That is so difficult. You didn't say anything! No, I know, because I was expecting him to look like... Almost start going slow. He's like, "All right, guys." I'm he's he's right. not speaking. I, I chose this specifically because he's not speaking fast. <laughs> he's speaking slowly. No, he's not. He's like, "All right, guys." No, 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 no. no he's not. I don't even know what he said. Okay, try again. Now remember. <clears throat> now remember. This this is about you having an Australian accent, yeah. Australian yeah. pronunciation. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Alright guys, All right, back, guys again, back again, back again, and back I decided again. to go for a walk today. I decided to go to, for a so walk today. So I've come down out of so the, uh, just come suburbs down and I'm living from in the here. suburbs that I'm living and in. And there is a nice park. And, um, there's a, a nice park, land. a bit of park land. Out to the side here. Out to the you side can here. see behind me. And hopefully you can see that behind me. With a bunch of different... With a bunch of different... Um, different animals in different there. Different animals foxes and foxes and kangaroos and Kel's been coming out walking. Kel's been coming out and walking. In the mornings and we sometimes go out in the evenings And sometimes we go out in the evening together as well. Yeah, they tend to be these kangaroos just hanging kangaroos around in different, hanging around, uh, different spots in there. Okay, so that was really good. Well done. So <laughs> Feeling the pressure. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, how, how did you think your Aussie accent was? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. But why? How, how do you know? I mean... Because the, the way I was speaking... Uh, I was I was concentrating more on how to speak English than the Aussie accent. Now we're going to we're going to introduce another level of of, of difficulty, okay? Because this is what's that, that was difficult enough. I know, but this is what's recommended by by the professionals, okay? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start the audio, okay. and we're going to count to five, and then you you start, okay? So we have a five second delay on the audio. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, all right, you ready? So we're going to pick up where we left off. Okay, so I'll count you in, okay? Just eating grass, I guess. And um, Go. Just eating when you grass, walk along, I guess. it's kind of and, funny uh, because when you, you won't see along, them. They kind of blend kind of into the background and really well. You don't well. see them and you and have blend that into the background. Gray, and have that the grey sort of coat colour. But as soon as you walk past and get close to them, they pop their heads and get up close and they, to them, they, pop they their sit heads up and they have and that look on their face, kind of like cows, the accent, where and the they'll be chewing. The you know that herbivore kind of look where their that jaws are kind of, kind of moving and, uh, up and down, but also from side to side <laughs> as they're chewing on grass. <laughs> amazing, amazing, so amazing. So now for um, level of difficulty three, okay, level three. What I want you to do is I want you to write numbers from from 1 to 20 on this piece of paper as you're doing the process so you're listening to him you're doing your Aussie accent and you're writing numbers from 1 to 20 okay 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 are right, you ready all right go on grass so and it's grass kind of cute. And, you'll um, see them there. So it's kind put of cute. Put their head up and, it, and be like, they put their head up doing? and be like, what are you, what are you doing? And my what joint. are you walking this is my past place. For? That's like my joint. That's my place. So I thought place. I would come down here today and do a little walking so, with Pete episode. So I thought again, I'd uh, chat come to down here and walk down the pier and the chat latest to news guys, in Canberra as well. The latest news in Canberra. My impressions of Canberra, I guess. My impressions of Canberra. And I guess the place as a whole. What it's been like living here for the last few weeks and, and my experiences. So I guess, again, we, we moved up here three weeks ago. Wow! Amazing, my man! That was incredible! That was absolutely amazing! Now, this is the final level of difficulty, okay? What, what you have to do now is, in every sentence that you hear, I want you to change one word. So, for example, imagine if he says, like, um, I don't know, kangaroo, you can change that for just animal. 
or if he says the, today is really good, you can say it's fantastic or excellent. So you're changing one word for like another similar word. One word per sentence, okay? Yes, one word per as much, sentence. Try, try as much as possible, okay? Okay. All right. All right, you got this. You ready? You ready? <laughs> okay. And we had quite a bit of fortune because... And we had a brilliant bit of we fortune. We were meant to be coming and, up uh, and we were staying meant to at, be a, up and at an staying Airbnb. At a, and the Airbnb was going to be... Airbnb Something like uh, nine hundred dollars for a fortnight. The Airbnb was so going to be about a thousand dollars for a fortnight. Nine hundred bucks a fortnight for a room. Million living bucks with some lady and her dog. For, uh, but living the, with some lady and a crocodile. Probably two nights and, uh, before we were going to come up here and stay we there. I told one of my friends here, that I told we were one planning of my to come family, up to Canberra. I, I, and I, I he was like, we "Well, he lived here." Up to Canberra, and, and he, he said, "Oh, we're going away." We're on going the day that you arrive, and, and we need someone to take care of our dogs. Away, we're going and so that's why, I'm, as I'm sure some of you have noticed, arrive, and we need I've been living in a house with a couple crocodile. of dogs. And, uh, <laughs> Amazing. Good work, my that, man. Whoa. So, um, how, how difficult do you think that that whole process is like? So difficult. Really? Too difficult. Really? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> Well, um, well, sir, as um, I can qualify that you have, um, as you have really good English as a native speaker, but you have a terrible Australian accent. <laughs> um, um, I mean, I'm curious, like, how much when you when you're doing it, how much did you feel like you could hear your own voice? You know what I mean? You can't. Oh, okay. You can't. Not, you know, you can't like. But but do you feel like that if you did that? Do you feel like if you did that every day that you would actually improve your Aussie accent? Mm. No? You, you focus on what he's saying too much. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, thank you, James. You've proven to be an incredible... Um, thank you. An incredible... James. Well, I think that was a clear demonstration of just how difficult shadowing really is. Even our native speaker, James, couldn't reproduce that audio accurately and he wasn't even able to concentrate on his pronunciation or, or maintain any type of Australian accent. So, for me, I think shadowing is a great exercise for the brain, but for accent and pronunciation, not so much. Well, I hope you found this class interesting. I would definitely like to hear about your experiences with shadowing. Do you enjoy it? Do you think it's helped you? And if you're a teacher, have you found it a successful technique with your students? If you would like to see any more classes about the English language, then don't forget to subscribe. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. Oh.